Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Learn Smart Coding. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add the JWT validation in your Azure API management. So we're going to see this with respect to the Azure AD B2C. So we have some prerequisites that you have to do before you look into the JWT validation. And uh, if you have already watched my previous Azure AD B2C demo with respect to the Web API and the Angular and uh, almost that is what we are going to do along with the JWT validation. Come, let's get started. On my screen, what I'm going to go through is uh, the initial prerequisites that is required. I'm going to go through quickly about it and directly jump into the JWT validation. Okay, so I have created the Azure AD B2C tenant and under the tenant, this should be three user flows. Okay, so the password reset, the profile edit, and the sign up, sign in user flow that I've already created. And under the app registration, I have created two apps. Let's go to the app called Web API. So this Web API app is nothing but hosting the, the Web API. Okay, and then that's the backend one. And then the SPA, SPA one is the one which serves for the front end. So if you have seen my previous video, you know about these two and how to configure it. I hope you can go and watch that video again to keep this video short. All right, so once you have these two things and the next thing that we are going to see is the API management itself. So I've already published your API management video. So wherein we set up the API management service and under the API management service, under the APIs, there are two APIs that we have already set up. One is the essential product APIs and then the second one is the restaurant API. So the essential product API is nothing but uh, the, the UI is nothing but this, this UI, this beautiful UI. All right. So what we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to remove. So if you compare this video with the previous video, the, the Azure AD B2C video, the difference is in Azure AD B2C video, we have the front end and then we directly access the back end API. So the back end API is configured in such a way that it validates the token that the, uh, the for the incoming request. And here we have removed the access, the, the validation, the token validation from the API, which means the API itself is having no access to it. Like there's no validation at all, but bear with me, I'll tell you what, uh, instead of what has been done. Okay, so instead of that, the API management will validate the JWT token. The Azure AD B2C login validation will happen at the Azure API gateway level, okay? If gateway validates and everything looks good, it will forward the request to the backend. So in order to do that, first what we have to do is, let's let's quickly take a look at this API, okay? So the API is here. So if we open this API, I have restricted this API to be accessible only from the API management. If you directly access here, like like this, it won't work. It won't work means it is protected now. Anyone cannot just directly access it because this API is not having any token validation. So instead, what you have to do is you have to go to this uh, API where the web, the web app is hosted. Okay, so here you have to go and go to the, there's something called networking under the settings. So click on the networking and here's something called access restrictions. Okay, so I will explain you what I have done. So basically I have added a rule and in the rule, I'm telling only from this IP, any request that comes to this, this to this web app, right, to this API should be denied, but only this IP should be allowed. And where is this IP coming up? See 16106, okay? So this IP is coming up from the Azure API management service. You see this IP? So any request that come from this one, if the origination of the request is from here, allow to request, if not, decline it. That's why when you go to direct link, it won't work. But if the request goes through this, it works. Okay. And so the first loophole, we have closed it. And then the next one, what you have to do was, you have to go to this API, come to the API to which you have to add the JWT token. And then under the inbound policy, you can create a new policy and add the JWT token, which I've already added it, but I'll explain you. Now, anything that you add at all operation level is called the, pro, the API level scope. Okay. So if you put it here for the inbound processing, then for all the APIs, this JWT token will be validated. But if you go to a specific 
API and add that validation, it validates only for the API. But in our case, we have to validate for everything, right? So what we are going to do is come here, click on all operation. Basically, I'm going to click on the policy and do this here. Okay. So now let's go ahead and edit this and see how it looks. Okay. So this is the uh, API that I've, this is the policy that I've added. Okay. There are only three things that you need to change. Okay. So I'll explain you. Now, the three things that you need to change is, one is the, uh, so first of all, before we go there, uh, take a look at this, so policy inbound. So we're going to add a policy at the inbound level. And here, what we're going to do is, we are saying it's it has to be a JWT validation. Uh, what will be the hidden name? What will be the HTTP status code that will be sent back if that fails? What will be the error message? It's like unauthorized access token is missing or invalid. That will be the error message. And the three things that I was talking about is this URL, the OpenID config URL, this URL, and then the audience and the issuer. And from where these three are coming. Okay. So let's go to ADB2C. Okay. Go to the API that we were referring. Um, no, go to the user flow that we are referring. Go to the user flows and go to sign up sign in flow. Once you go to sign up sign in flow, click on run user flow. Now don't click anything else. Take a look at this, this URL. Okay. This URL, if you copy, that is the URL that we have to put into this one. Okay. So this URL is nothing but the one that we copy pasted. Okay. You see this, this is the tenant, uh, ADB to see tenant name. All right. So if I copy paste this URL, you see this, uh, uh, JSON coming up and the first one is the issuer. The issuer that is showing up here, this issuer needs to go to the issuer section. It will go here. Okay. You see this 2C3E. 2C3E ends with this. Okay. So now we know two things. One is the URL that we opened it. And then the issuer that is inside this URL is what have to come here. Audience. Audience is nothing but the API that you are trying to validate. Now, if you come here, go to the adb to c app registration and go to the app itself. Okay. You see this one, it ends with E3, E6. This is the client application ID. This is the one that comes under the audience. Okay. So only these three things you need to change. You need to uh, copy paste the open ID config URL, the issuer inside that URL, and then the audience. Okay. Once you have copy pasted these three things, okay, we'll discard this. Once you have copy pasted these three things, you'll be able to access any of this with the proper token. Okay. All right. Let's go to this postman and you see this, this is the, this is the URL that I'm trying to access it. And if you see this URL, this is the API gateway URL and then followed by the API product product name. So which will, this will actually validate the JWT. And if that works good, it will forward to this API. Okay. Now let me clear off this. Let's go here. Let's run this. See, I got a 401. There is no authorization, right? It's not authenticated. The JWT token has not been passed. So how do we generate the JWT token? It's exactly same how you did for the Azure ADB to see with Angular. Okay. So there are two ways you can do. One is to go to the user flow and generate it. But the reason of this video is how do you uh, integrate this JWT token with your regular Azure ADB to C app, which is with respect to the Angular and the backend. Okay. Now, having that said, what I've done is I have reconfigured this application, which is in the GitHub. So if you go to the auth config, Okay, I changed this name to the one that we are using, which is learn smart coding demo. Okay, and then the client ID, you see this client ID, this client ID is nothing but the client ID, which is for the spa, which is for the front end application. You see this one ends with 5202. So let's see, let's take a look ends with 5202. That's it. That's the only change. So this is the, the Azure ADB to C login tenant which I have changed and then the front end client ID. That's it. The rest of the application is still all same. You can actually go to the, uh, this URL, which is in the GitHub 
and you can choose to choose this branch Azure AD B2C branch which is having the authentication and once you did this okay so the application is running so let's log out this and then let's open up the F12 okay so now it's bringing me the sign up screen once I sign in you can see here token okay so the token is having the token that we need to send it so I copy this token okay go to postman go to authorization under that and we are going to send this in the bearer token as a bearer token so copy paste this and now we started getting 200 earlier it was 401 see to how do you invalid this just type something it becomes invalid see now we started getting 401 so now you know how to remove the validation from the api put behind the azure api management which is nothing but api gateway and then validate that at the j the validate the JWT token and then validate the JWT token in the API gateway itself. Okay, so this way you can have multiple tenants in behind the API management and you can validate all those tokens in the front end itself. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know specifically where you're stuck. And um, if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon.